Hey, welcome back to our unit on volcanoes and earthquakes. Okay, today we're going to learn about seismic waves and triangulation. Okay, our unit, once again, earthquakes and volcanoes, our last day of notes on earthquakes. So today we're going to learn the three types of seismic waves, and you're going to learn how scientists find the epicenter, the location of an earthquake, using the different speeds of seismic waves. And you will understand triangulation and how it is used to find earthquake location. So try. Think about try. What does try mean? Usually it deals with things in three. All right. So go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on to the quick write. All right, quick write. Answer a question of your choice in two to three sentences. Where do you think the safest place to be during an earthquake is? Okay. Have you ever felt an earthquake? Describe the experience. Okay, what are some famous earthquakes or tsunamis you have heard of? And then, if you drop a rock in a pond or lake, what happens to the water? Okay, go ahead and pause this. If you need more time, do your quick write. Here we go. All right, so waves are all around us. Light waves, ocean waves, and sound waves. If you throw a pebble in a pond, okay, or lake, the waves of energy will move out in all directions. Okay, well, that's kind of like when an earthquake goes off. When an earthquake goes off, it releases seismic waves that move out in all directions, like in this diagram here. So seismic waves are generated or created by earthquakes, and it's these waves that shake the ground during an earthquake. Okay, so what are seismic waves? Okay, question on the left-hand side, answer goes on the right-hand side. Use the answer bank to determine which words best complete the sentence. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, when an earthquake goes off, it releases three seismic waves. There's three types of seismic waves that exist. We have primary, secondary, and surface waves. So we have primary waves. These are the fastest waves, and they cause rock to compress and stretch. Okay? And then we have S waves. S waves are slower than primary waves and basically move rock in an up and down motion. Okay, And then we have surface waves and these are the most destructive because they travel through rock at the surface causing rock to move in a circular up and down side to side motion. Okay, Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Okay, So surface waves. So the primary waves are the fastest, secondary waves are the second, second fastest. Okay, and surface waves are the slowest, okay, and they are the most destructive. They cause most of the damage during an earthquake. So, what are the three types of seismic waves? Okay, primary waves, secondary waves, and surface waves. Once again, use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the blank here. Okay, go ahead and pause this while you get this down. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next slide. Okay, so recording an earthquake, seismic rays are released. So after an earthquake, seismic waves are released. Okay, and a seismograph records this thing. Seismic stations on a seismograph record these earthquakes with a seismograph. Okay, so these seismographs record P waves first, S waves second, and then the, the deadly big surface waves last here. Okay. These waves are usually the biggest because they shake the ground the most. Okay, so they, in other words, they have the highest amplitude. So once again, real quick, these seismographs record P waves first, S waves second, and then surface waves last. Okay. So, what is a seismograph? For your notes, an instrument to record seismic waves from an earthquake. Use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence. Go ahead and pause this, please. Oh, draw and label this, please. Draw and label your seismograph down below. All right, here we go. Pause this. Okay, the distance to earthquake epicenter. 
Scientists use the seismograph, these seismographs, to locate the epicenter of an earthquake. Remember, the P wave is faster and is recorded first. The S wave is slower and it's recorded second. And the surface waves are the slowest and they're recorded last. Every, every seismograph records a time delay between the P and S waves. So every seismograph records a time delay here between the P and the S waves. Okay. Whoop, let me go back here. So, the farther from the earthquake epicenter, the greater the time delay. Okay, so here's a PS, here's the time delay between the P and the S waves. The farther you are from an earthquake, the greater this distance between the P and the S wave. This time delay between the P and the S wave is used to find the distance to the earthquake epicenter. Okay? So, watch carefully. Here's an earthquake epicenter. S waves are blue, P waves are red. Let's watch what happens when an earthquake goes off here. So an epicenter goes off, it gives off, the P waves are faster. So they move out ahead. And the P wave is recorded, right? And then a delay, and then we get the S wave. So we get that lag time delay between the P and the S wave. Okay. So, P waves are recorded first, S waves are recorded second. Okay, so, hope you're following so far. Now, let's try this on a map here. Here's a United States map. Okay, earthquake goes off, P waves. Okay, then the S wave is recorded. Okay, this P, S wave lag time delay will give us the distance to the epicenter. Okay, so the SP lag time delay is equal to the distance to the epicenter. Okay, the time delay between the S and the P wave gives us the distance to epicenter. In other words, the SP time delay equals distance to epicenter. Very important concept here. So let's throw a circle on there. Anywhere on this circle we know the epicenter could be. Okay, that radius equals the distance to epicenter. So if we move this circle, okay, that is equal to the distance to the epicenter. But we can't just use one seismic station. We need three because anywhere in this circle could be the epicenter. We don't know where the epicenter is. We just know that it's somewhere on this circle. Okay. So what is the SP time delay interval for your notes? Okay, question on the left hand side, answer on the right hand side. Okay, use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence here. Go ahead and pause this, please. Okay. Triangulation. Notice there's three seismic stations here. Tri, meaning three. Okay, now let's watch what happens when an earthquake goes off. Epicenter releases P and S waves. Seismic station A records it first, the P and the S time lag time delay, and then seismic station B records it, and then seismic station C records it. But notice there is a greater lag time between the P and the S wave here because it's farther away. The closest station, seismic station A, has a shorter PS lag time, seismic station B a little bit greater lag time, PS wave lag time, and seismic station C is the farthest away, so it has the greatest P S wave lag time. Okay. Now, remember, we use this P S delay, time delay between the P and the S wave to find the distance to an earthquake. So, there's the P S time delay for each station. The t the time delay, the time lag time delay. Okay. So, now let's get rid of those seismographs in a second here. But let's throw some circles on there first. Okay. Now let's get rid of the seismographs and line these circles up. So if we move one circle there, we move one circle there, and we move one circle there. Where's the epicenter? It's located where all three circles intersect. Okay, so the epicenter is located where all three circles intersect. Bingo. Okay, epicenter. Why three circles? Because if we only have two circles, the epicenter could be there or there. But with three circles, it gives us an exact location. So bingo, epicenter, the location of the earthquake. All right. 
So, what is triangulation? Last one for your notes today. Question on the left-hand side, answer on the right-hand side. Use the answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence. Go ahead and pause this while you write. I'm going to move on. Okay, I'm sorry. We have one more, one more glass short one here. Okay, when an earthquake releases seismic waves, it releases P and S waves. So we've learned this. Okay, well, for some reason, scientists call this a shadow zone over here. What's a shadow zone? Okay, well, so when an earthquake goes off, it releases P and S waves. These seismic stations record P and S waves. This one records P and S waves. Okay. However, only over here, scientists realize that they're only recording P waves over here. Why is that? Okay. P, that's because P waves have the ability to pass through the core, liquid outer core, and mantle, where they are recorded at seismic stations around the world. So every seismic station here records P waves because they can pass through liquid, core, and the mantle. Okay. S waves, though, scientists realize that S waves cannot pass through the liquid and are not recorded around the world. So we don't record S waves at these two locations over here in the shadow zone. Why is that? Because the reason is because S waves cannot pass through liquid. Therefore, scientists discovered that, okay, the that the outer core must be made of liquid because scientists know that S waves can't pass through liquid. And because they're not recorded over here, scientists have figured out that the, the outer core is made of liquid iron. Okay, so because S waves cannot pass through liquid, we know the Earth's outer core is liquid iron. Okay, last one for today. How do we know the outer core is made of liquid iron? Okay. So by studying P and S waves, S waves cannot pass through blank, creating a shadow zone where no S waves are created. So use that answer bank to determine which word best completes the sentence. Go ahead and pause this. I'm going to move on to the summary. Okay, congratulations, you're done. And except we have the summary here. Go ahead and pause it. Okay, real quick, see if you can determine which letter represents the deadly surface waves and which letter represents the time delay here. Which letter represents the fastest primary waves? Just quiz yourself. And which letter represents the slower secondary waves? Okay. When you're done, go ahead now and do the summary. Okay. All right. So summarize. And you are all done. Have a great evening. We'll see you next time. Go ahead and pause this.